welcome back to Defining Moments. I'm your host, Suzanne Quast. Here, we sit down with influential people and share the defining moments that shape their lives in a meaningful way. Our next guest is Jonathan Lipnicki. You might remember him as the little kid in Jerry Maguire. However, he has had quite a journey in the entertainment business. He suffered anxiety, depression, and now he is on the top of his game. Here are his defining moments. All right, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming in your muscle t-shirt. Oh uh, yeah, we were just joking about that. So I didn't notice that right here, uh, it, it's like sewed together to I think make you look like you have bigger arms. It does, And I yes. wish I noticed that the first 20 times I wore this shirt, but uh, you know. No, it's like yeah. a gun show, it's perfect. Yeah. I'm teasing. Sit, sit. <laughs> <laughs> See, young uh, young TV star or movie star to now a heartthrob. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> okay, but I have to st uh, talk about yeah. Jerry Maguire. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been asked about it at nauseum, but yeah. I have some questions maybe people haven't asked you before. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, and first and foremost, how did you or when did you know you wanted to be an actor? Because you did Jerry Maguire at five, right? Yeah, um, I, I took a, like a local acting class. At five? Yeah. Uh, Shut four and three, up. Four and three quarters, actually. I'm oh. very proud of that at the time. Uh, my sister was taking one, I think, like, do you have an older sibling? Um, no, I'm the oldest. Okay, if you have like an older sibling, sometimes you kind of want to do what they're doing. And my sister would go to this acting class and she'd come out and she was super happy. And I asked my mom if I could try it. And my mom was like, no, you're too young for the class. It doesn't start till whatever age. And the teacher thought I had a lot of charisma when uh -huh. she met me and was like, you know what, I'll, he's young, but I'll let him try this. And then I started doing it. And then I told my parents I wanted to like, pursue it. And they're like, no, you know, not at all. Crazy. They really didn't want to, because I'm like, I want to audition. Because you know, we practice for fake auditions in the class. And my parents were not really for it at first because it's a huge time commitment. And um, you know, I mean, it doesn't really have the best rep child actors. So uh, they finally let me try like commercial auditions and I booked I think like two commercial auditions. Okay. And then um, I auditioned for this movie called Jerry Maguire um, with Maverick from Top Gun. That's what I knew about it. But and you knew that even at that age? Yes, yeah, because when, when they're like, do you know who Tom Cruise is? My parents and I was like, no. And then they showed me Top Gun. It was my favorite movie. Which are and, four and a, are four yeah. three quarters. That's adorable. And so I auditioned for it and I, I didn't get the role and they went with another kid and they shot two weeks with him. And then they went to replace uh, the kid and they, I was on a list of people who had already been seen, mm -hmm. but uh, so they wouldn't see me and my agent had to keep begging because I'd been seen by a casting associate and not the casting actual director. Okay. And then once I, he finally got me in front of the casting director and once I was in front of the casting director, I did it and she that day was like, how do you want to fly today? Would you like to fly today to meet Tom Cruise and uh, Cameron Crowe in Arizona and read for them? And so then I went to Arizona that day and read for uh, them in Tom's trailer. My parents came, it was a really exciting oh thing. Oh my God. And, um, got the part. Do you remember the audition scenes? I remember the trailer and I remember like Tom's trailer and I remember like certain little things. Like I remember I bought a Phoenix Sun shirt while I was in Arizona. <laughs> so Funny things to remember. Uh, and then, you know, I just remember Tom, um, but I forget what scenes it was. I think it was the, I think it was the scene where, where I'm like, go ahead and go okay. when he's leaving. Oh, which yeah. is so sad. And I cried because I like Tom. <laughs> Did you really yeah. cry? Dude, that's impressive. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you, like it was, he was, he was my. I mean, still in many ways is my hero today, but like was, you know, the singular hero of mine at that age. And so I was like really sad. You know, I really liked him. Oh my gosh, uh, Do you, were you nervous? No, I wish I was that way now in yeah. auditions. Like I was not nervous <laughs> at all. I was like, let's go. You know, fearless. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so then I heard you also say that at one point you asked Tom Cruise, which mm -hmm. sounds so weird to say, yeah. I was going to just say Tom, but yeah. uh, for advice and that you went to his house. Is that right? Yeah. When you were older. Yeah, like 21 or 22 years old, I think. I just was like, you know what, I'm going to reach out. And I cold called uh, United Artists at the time, and that was his office. And uh, they got back to me and they're like, yeah, like, you know, we could set something up. And it you know, took a while. He has like you know a crazy schedule because he's Tom Cruise. Uh huh. And so you know we worked out schedules, and I I, I went over, and he's just like, yeah, come on over, and uh, sat on his patio and talked about acting with uh, with Tom Cruise, which still like <laughs> to this day I don't care if I meet him a million times or hang out with him, it's still Tom Cruise, man. That's still getting to talk about acting with one of the one of the biggest movie stars, if not the biggest movie star of all time. Okay, but I have to know yeah. what did he say? 
Man, that dude's all about preparation. Okay. I mean, he he prepares for roles like nobody's business, and just preparing for life in general. Like he just stay always stays ready. He's just always you know always doing something towards his goals, and he just has a firm belief that you just have to you know kind of not take no for an answer uh -huh. um, about you know when people say something can't be done or you know you can't do certain things in your career. You know he's he's and he's also about like accountability. He's like if you're not at the place you want to be, you yeah. know, you can't blame that on everybody else but yourself. You have to include yourself in that equ uh, equation and really work on yourself and continue work on being a better artist, watch movies, read books, go to acting class, always be training. That's so yeah. cool. Like, that is a pinch yourself yeah. moment. I mean, it would have been cool if you, like, had it on audio. Yeah, I wish I got So I wasn't going to about to be like, you know. <laughs> Excuse me, can we yeah, just pause so this for a second? Yeah. But I feel awkward anyway, because I feel like half the time I was like, <laughs> you know, it's like still, you know, I mean, it's, you know, I, I've talked to him here and there and every time I'm like, oh man, like, what do I say? Like, this guy's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Did you take any of the advice that he gave you with preparation, accountability, um, and apply that? And what, how did that yeah. alter then how you looked at acting and how you prepared for things? Well, I think that it's just a, a varying degree of getting, I'm getting better at it. I feel like I think that there's, you know, there's stuff that even in wording, when you word things, you know, you, 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 you know, you can either victimize yourself as far as being an artist and not getting what you want, or you can empower yourself. And I feel like since meeting with him, I'm more empowering myself being like, you know what, if not this one, then the next one. And just kind of that overall positive attitude is something I've taken from him from an early age. And this wasn't even, this wasn't even the, that time I sat down with him. He's always told me to make my own stuff. And mm -hmm. that's something I've always uh, started, you know, I've, I've always taken from him and something I've started doing more and more and more. Got it. So you're making more of your own stuff. So you're yeah. now writing and producing. And yeah, yeah. What are you working on now? With um, uh, sorry, I just interrupted. No, no. Uh, I just did because I'm excited. I just did a really cool project with uh, Teresa Rebeck. Okay. I'm familiar with her? She's a playwright. Um, she also created the show Smash. On okay. NBC. And um, I did a really cool short that she wrote for me. That's so. But how really did that cool. even come about? So, so I it came about out of frustration. I was pinned for like my dream job. And pinned if I don't know if everyone it's like on hold mm -hmm. or and it was down to me and one person and it didn't go my way and I was like man and I've had that happen a few times where like I'm like second place yeah and I was talking to one of my friends who's a producer I really admire and I was like dude like what do I what can I do I want to make some great art but also like I want to make a difference in my career I want I want to take a step up because mm -hmm. I've been lucky enough a lot to work in my adult career but I'm the first to tell you that I haven't done anything as significant uh, as I did when I was a kid. With yep. the exception of like, writing-wise, the play you saw me in, uh huh, um, you know, which was the, great, we, you know, which was amazing writing by John Polono, uh huh, and but like I that's haven't really good. done anything like, that's made an impact like like you know I did had the amazing opportunity to do a, a few studio films uh, when I was younger, and so I was asking my friend who's a producer, he's like, what do I do? And he's like, he's like, you know what, let's let's do a short, and he's like, I, I know some great writers who would you like to reach out to? And he gave me some names, and she's like. I'm a huge fan of her. So I was like, can we reach out to her? And you know, she was really willing to at least talk to me. And so we talked on the phone and then I sent her some footage of me and she was like, I like it. We agreed to work together and two weeks later she had this thing sent to me that was like That's amazing. So, amazing. So did you guys then collaborate on what kind of role you were looking for? Yeah, like we, what? yeah, we, she got kind of a sense of who I was. Uh -huh. And um, then she kind of just wrote around that. And it's one of those things where I don't want to give like somebody like that criteria, like they're so smart, she's brilliant. You know, I, I'm not gonna be, I'm, I don't want to like constrict <laughs> her at all. I'm like, be, do what you do. Yeah. You know, I think that's the smartest thing you can always realize as a filmmaker, as an artist is like, always surround yourself with people who are better at you at every single thing oh, that you so do, smart. you know? And, and I'm not gonna be the writer, like I'll leave that up to her. So she came up with this amazing concept and, um, Right now we're po we're in post and I just got like the first cut of this kind of new version we were doing and I was like I, I was like yeah like oh, I, I'm not so gonna cool. say what I said because I don't know. can you cuss on here well I yeah. mean okay well I did <laughs> I saw it. yes yeah yeah I said f yes to myself in my apartment watching it oh that's so cool I was so just so cool. excited and it's cool to be able to work on great material like that hundred you know? percent um, what's it about can we get a teaser I'm not gonna talk about it right now okay yeah right. well we'll see but uh. I felt really privileged to be able to work with such a great writer and uh, it's amazing that after you have like a kind of a downer moment in your career where like something doesn't work at work out it often after that you know if you're proactive in it too you, great things happen 
A hundred percent. And I feel like that's something I really admire about you is your tenacity, mm -hmm. your dedication, and your constant go at it. Yeah. And you have been pretty vocal about also some of the difficulties yeah. you had yeah. with bullying and anxiety. And I, you had mentioned that at the age of eight, I think, yeah. you had your first panic attack. Yeah. What happened? Like, what happened that day? Uh, you know, I mean, it was it was something. I don't know how much I want to talk. I've never really talked about that. Uh, it was something that seemed like a whole huge deal when I was a kid, and it was very irrational. It was like an irrational fear. Like I used to kind of have irrational fears of dying from like, uh -huh. being poisoned by chemicals, like really, really out there kind of stuff that was extremely irrational. And now my anxiety is more career and, and life focused, or like. I get a lot of anxiety. I never want to hurt anyone's feelings. I hate being mm. late. That's something that gives me like <laughs> I was stressing today because, well, they'll they'll never know. But basically, my my roommate we had tandem parking and his car died behind mine, so I was running late. And I got okay. here late today, it's and it, that stuff freaks me out more now. Where as a kid, it was more irrational fears of like, oh no, will this kill me? Will this poison me? And um, it got so bad that I would have like um, eczema all over my hands That's from doing this all day. And I was always having a panic attack pretty much all day unless I was playing basketball or acting. That's so interesting. So then you just yeah. immersed yourself completely in like, those yeah, two things. Yeah, I became obsessed with basketball. I played like three and a half hours a day. And then I was like, like, you know, focusing on work and, you know, just trying to not, you know, not never be in the, I mean, never not be in the moment, you yeah. know, because that's what would take it away. You know? But even that, what a beautiful thing that you just said is that's to be in the moment. Yeah. When you're in the moment, yeah. you're not worried about the future. Exactly. You're not dwelling on the past. You're just present. And so to do things yeah. that make you more mindful. Yeah. And thank you for sharing. I think a lot of people struggle with anxiety and depression. I remember the first time I had my first anxiety attack. Yeah, yeah. It is no joke. Yeah. I was running and it was like for no apparent, I think I was obsessing about my career yeah. and I like couldn't catch my breath yeah. and it took a second. I was like, what is happening? What is happening? Yeah. I felt like I was, like I said, having a heart attack. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people think it's a heart attack or something crazy going on and then they find out it's a panic attack. They'll go to the ER often if they've never had that feeling before because it feels like the end of the world. Yep. You know, and it's, it's crazy. It's something I still struggle with today. Like I, you know, t literally today, I am feeling better now because I'm talking to you and like I have my focus on you. But like my heart was hurting on the way. And I was oh, like, it's ah. so sweet. It's so okay. Yeah. Like I hate being late. I hate disappointing people. I always try to be the best friend and also the most professional person I can be. And like that stuff kills me. Ugh. Kills me. Well, and then you also vocally talk about the fact that you were bullied. Yeah. And I remember middle mm -hmm. school for me, and it was awful yeah. like kids were I yeah. can't imagine being a celebrity and yep. going through it but it was really bad the girls would have parties and they wouldn't invite me they would say they couldn't have anybody else over yeah. they called me a lesbian and at the time I mean now you know who cares but yeah. they it had to me I there was just this word that they were throwing at yeah. me and I don't even know why yeah. but kids are mean yeah how did you deal with that um you know, a lot of a lot of ways. You know, there's still sadly stuff from that I take that I'm still working on in therapy, mm -hmm. like being extremely defensive. Um, I came into middle. I had you know, elementary school was pretty good. It was you know, it was pretty innocent. Yeah. But my middle school, like three different middle schools, fed into it, and um, I just came off like the best summer of my life. Mm -hmm. I had I got to travel around Europe um, with Bow Wow promoting Like Mike. So cool. And I had Like Mike and Stuart Little open within a month of each other. Yeah. Stuart Little too. And it was just so, so fun between the two press tours for that. Like I love traveling and I got to be with one of my good friends at the time, Bow Wow, and like go around Europe and like play basketball and like every talk show was like basketball related. So we got to like constantly just shoot hoops and it, it was a blast. I, I had the best summer ever and I came into middle school really wanting to like make new friends and I'm like excited for this new part of my life. and. Um, it was pretty rough because first it was just a lot of attention because uh -huh. people were not used to having somebody, you know, who's like an actor. Yeah, famous. School. But um, quickly that turned really negative and people would assume that I think I'm better than someone because I liked, I dress kind of flamboyantly because I love basketball so I had like big jerseys and like, yeah. I always post about my face like <laughs> I'm being well documented. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, but kids yeah. wear like starter jackets. and Not like, at my school. No, it was not well, I think cool. it was like be a, be a skater, you know, okay. there's tight jeans and almost like that, like wearing like a, uh, you know, uh, like rock and roll tee or whatever and like I wasn't, super cool and like I I tried to get along with everyone and then it, 
bullying, what it did, it wasn't a matter of dealing with it. I endured it. Um, it was really hard. Um, but you know what? I, I've always kept perspective, and like a lot of people have way tougher struggles than, than I do. And I got through it. You know, it made me a tougher person, and that's one of the good things. It made me more resilient. I learned how to like handle myself. At the same time, I'm having this war in my head because I'm dealing with anxiety already. Like I'm already the most, you know, um, or the the least confident I've been in my life at this point. Yeah. And then I have on top of that people telling me I'm like, you know, a piece of crap or whatever, and or like I think I'm this or I think I'm better than anyone. I never thought it was better than anyone. I thought it was uni It's unique what you know what we do as as artists, and that's cool. But like the way I'm I was raised, my parents are really grounded people, and they always told me like. You do this, it doesn't define you, it doesn't make you better than anyone. Sometimes as an actor you have an amazing opportunity to like bring light to certain situations or do charities, but it doesn't make you better than anyone, you know, just because you do this, you know, you still have to yeah. be polite to everyone. And I always tried my best and yeah. then I became I got to a point where I got so defensive that I wasn't the person who I wanted to be, nor who I was naturally. Yeah. And um yeah, it's something to this day that I look back and I'm like, Man, I told myself it wasn't a big deal, and I let all this like resentment build up in me. And, that's yeah, hard. Yeah. You're a kid. Like, I, yeah. I think you have to be easy on yourself. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot to handle. Here you are. This is where you go. You go to school every single day. And if kids are mean every single day, how can you learn? How can you be present? How can you? I don't even know. Then I'm sure then that might be affecting your work. And then you're like, what am I doing? That's hard. Yeah, I mean, it sucks. You know, not gonna sugarcoat it. You yeah. know, I still get prank calls from my hometown. I'm 27 Are you years old. Serious? Yeah. What would you say now to anybody who's getting bullied? What advice would you give? You know what? I hate how uh, I shouldn't hate. It's a strong word, but I feel really passionate about uh, passionate about this. Um, I don't like how all these programs you see movie stars and they're like, it gets better, and then someone's sitting there like, gee, thank you. I'll just wait for the next 10 years. Yeah. You know, it gets better if you are proactive in that, and I think that's what they really need to add to those kind of messaging. If you are interested in astrology and people mm -hmm. think it's stupid, go find other people that are interested in astrology. Start an astrology club. Be the best at what you are interested in and, 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 and get more involved with that and put your energy on that and you will find like-minded individuals a lot of the time. Yeah, it's not gonna solve everything, yep. but it you know, makes problems a lot you know, less. Like I found a lot of friends to do basketball at the time and mm -hmm. that helped me deal with it a lot. Um, but yeah, it's a tough. It's a tough thing because there's no right answer. No. Like, oh, you tell them don't do that anymore. You know. Or beat them up. Or, or beat them up. Or say mean things back and or just ignore it. It's just it's it's a difficult yeah. thing. I don't feel like it's the school bully syndrome anymore too, where it's like one person. It's a gang mentality. It's like yeah, what are you gonna do? Beat up twenty people? Like yeah. good luck, like Neo from the Matrix. Yeah. Like <laughs> you know. Uh, don't we wish we all had superpowers? Yeah, powers? but it's even if you could beat up twenty people, that's not that's not the answer. Yeah. You know. And uh, my mom said to me, yeah. she was like, when it was happening, she was like, you know, Suzanne, you can't control other people. Mm. She's like, fearlessly be who you are. Are, mm. what goes around comes around mm. and I promise you that one day this will all come back full circle for them and I didn't understand it at the time but that makes sense she was like don't dim your light in order for them to feel better yeah but that's easier again said, said than done that. and like it's gonna dim to a certain point because you just don't want to deal with it anymore yeah you know um, but yeah I think the really a, a, a major key to it is Finding what you're interested in, and that's good advice. You know, and, and being proactive. Be proactive in your it gets better. Got it. I you love know? that. Yeah. Okay, so we're. I can't believe time's really already up, but we have a little uh, last minute question. So some of these are kind of challenging, yeah. but just yeah. the first thing that comes to your mind. Yeah. All right. So what's the most difficult decision you've had to make to fulfill your greater purpose? You know what? It's it, it's more of a not what what decision I've made. It's a constant making of this decision, and it's to try to care less what others think of me. It's always something. I don't think it's. I think it's when people are like, I don't, you know, give a. It's not true. Like you give everybody. We're human. Yeah. We give. A, we care to a certain extent. It's about dimming that extent that we care to about people who don't want what's best for us. Like you know what? Like I should care what my mom thinks and maybe some of my best friends and my dog. Mm -hmm. And besides that, you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Besides that, he turned 11 yesterday, by the way. No, happy birthday. But uh, I, besides that, I mean, it really, it really doesn't matter if it's not going to help you. 
you know, there's a difference between people who give you constructive criticism and people who are just dimming your light. I and you totally gotta make that agree. decision who you surround yourself with. And it's crazy because my birthdays are getting smaller, you know, definitely, and I'm 100%. proud of myself for it. But it's also, I don't have as much riffraff around, you know? Yep. Okay. Um, what do you do for inspiration? What do I do for inspiration? This is sound so, so nuts. I've never said this. <laughs> Man, sometimes I put on music that I know gets it out of me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I go on my street with my headphones like late at night and I walk up and down and I'm like, like I'll shadow box, I'll like, you know, I'll tell myself positive affirmations, I'll daydream, you know, a lot of, cause you went to, did you go to Playhouse West? I did. Yeah, a lot of that, like that daydreaming, I, uh -huh. I take that to my real life. And I, I daydream of things I'm accomplishing and things that I'm doing because the important thing to know, I think with, with art and with, with anything you're pursuing that you know, if you're doing, if you're trying to pursue something that a lot of other people want, yep. you gotta really have a strong sense of self and a, and kind of like, I feel like daydreaming in a way of that is good as long as it's not just being a dreamer. You gotta look at it like you're already doing and you're already in the process of doing. I love that. But like, that. I, I visualize a lot. That's so yeah. great. I love that, okay. And then wh who is an actor you'd love to work with now? That's so hard. Don so Cheadle. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, he's one, definitely. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people, man. I'd love to work with, like, uh, uh, man, I hate getting put on the spot of this. Like, Ed Norton's always, he's always so one I've always good. wanted to. Uh, Michael Fassbender. Oh, amazing. Uh, Oscar Isaac. You know, there's a lot of cool people out there, like Carrie Mulligan. Yep. Uh, Michelle Williams. Uh, I mean, there's like a lot of really good, we're in a time of a lot of really good I acting. Couldn't I couldn't agree. Like, and a lot of really good TV. A lot of good a people on TV. A hundred percent. Yes. Okay, what are your keys to success? Uh, my keys to success are, um, I would say, knowing when it's time to rest. Because you know what, there's a difference between working hard and working smart. Mm. Like, you know, you see those people are like, grind all day, rise and grind. And then you see they like, <laughs> you like, they burn themselves out, like completely. And it's like, it's not about being up till four in the morning doing something. It's about doing something, you know, concentrated for, for a certain amount of time. And I think that people forget about rest. Uh -huh. And if you, you're not gonna be doing something as well if you're not rest. Like yesterday, I was doing some stuff, took a mental health day. Haven't done that forever. Good for you. You know, um, but now I feel, you know, refreshed today. I think I would have dealt with, with my situation and getting here late worse if I didn't sleep, you know? Yep. And you can't burn the candle at both ends. So I think that's important, like time management uh -huh. of, of working hard and not working, uh, working uh, smart and not necessarily just working hard. Um, I also think admitting your failures and mm -hmm. acknowledging them. Too many people today are like, because of the Instagram world where we think everybody's doing better than us, too many people are like, life's the greatest, hashtag living my best life, whatever. Hashtag bless. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and like, we're, you're not, and we're not, you know? It's, it's a tough time for everybody right now. It's a weird time, we're all kind of divided, you know? Um, I think that admitting when you're sad, admitting when you failed at something is healthy. Amen Because I've failed way, way more times than I succeeded, but like, a lot of my times have succeeded have followed a big failure. Yeah, well, and yeah. everybody's, you're, we're looking at everybody's highlight reel yeah. on social media. Exactly. I mean, if you turn, turn the negativity and the failures into success. I had the worst audition of my life. I turned it into a short. It got 100,000 views in the first day in like a write-up in Time magazine. That's and, that, that uh, is awesome. That is know, inspiring. And it's like about a real producer out there and he doesn't know about it, but funny enough, some of the people <laughs> he works with tweeted at me and were like, we love this. <laughs> And it's like people he's partnered with on the show he was on. And he told me, because I walked into an audition, he told me I was not attractive for like 10 minutes. And yes. how I used to be cute and like I grew up ugly. And it was very uh, shocking at 19 years old. I left the room, my agent called me, he said, what did you do in there? They said you were a jerk. I didn't say anything. I was just, I shut down. And they're oh. like, you weren't comfortable about talking about your past. I'm like, no, I, I'm comfortable talking about my past. But like when somebody insults me, Oh yeah, he had sunglasses on and an unlit cigar, not joking. And, <laughs> I mean, and when someone brings me in to audition for their TV show and then just rips me a new one for no reason, and I've never met them in my life, like. I'm, yeah. I sat there and took it as well as I could yeah. without telling him. 27 year old me, man, I would have made, <laughs> said some mean things, but uh, 19 year old me, I was scared and, and it hurt me. And then I'd tell people the story and they'd laugh and I'm like, well, that's not funny. This is not. And then I realized it was kind of funny. And then I wrote a short and you know, uh, with one of my friends who's a really talented writer and we made it. Uh, and it, it turned out to be a really good way to kind of reintroduce myself to certain audiences. That's awesome, yeah. good for you. It's called You Used To Be Cute. 
Check it out on YouTube. <laughs> Made it a few years ago. Yes. Yeah. Okay, final question. Yeah. If you could define the legacy you want to leave behind in a couple of words, what would it be? You know, I always look at myself as like, uh, I call myself a lot of times, I'm like, I'm a comeback kid. Mm -hmm. I want, and not that it's like I've ever like left or had any crazy problems, but I want to do something more significant in my adult life than I did as a kid. I want, you know, and that's granted, and I think it's okay because I accept it, that's a chip on my shoulder. Yep. I work really hard because of it, but if, if something is a chip on your shoulder but works, makes you work in a positive way, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. I want to show people who I am now. I have a lot more to give now. Mm -hmm. um, and I... You have a lot more layers to yeah, your life experiences. Exactly, and um, I just really want that opportunity. Yes, I love Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for coming. This yeah. was awesome. I feel like Thank we you. just tipped the surface. Good, good. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Well, that is a wrap. <gasps> Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. We have some amazing guests coming up. Thanks for tuning in.